So what I'm going to do is test five perfect solids. So I don't think I can test a sphere because it's not generated as a perfect sphere in the program. I mean, I don't really know whether a sphere counts as having one face and no, or just one vertex, or an infinite number of faces and an infinite number of vertexes, or any combination of those two things. And whatever happens, you can't produce a perfect sphere in wings. But we can produce other versions of the perfect solids that we'll, we can do this test on. So Art Wade suggested something here, so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'll probably edit some of the steps out because there's going to be a lot of repetition. But I will show you the steps that uh, this process is going to involve. So I'm going to start with the least number of sides. So this is the tetrahedron. I'll select the entire object, select the vertex, as right click and bevel. So this is going to be mostly like the process used in the other video. Intrude a bit, doesn't really matter much. Press space to deselect, select edge tool, select one of these outer edges, press I for identical and loop and loop again just to make sure those go round. Right click and left click for circularize, select that one. Right click and loop cut then locate the face that isn't selected, hide that in the geometry graph, press space to deselect the rest, select the face tool, select one of these inner squares, bring the missing one back in, press I for identical, right click and rotate, normal, hold the shift key down, take it around 45 degrees, select the entire object and weld it back together again, select the entire object, do Sabian subdivision, identify the bits that go around the edge, so use identical G, identical G, select those. Now at this point what I was doing in the other video was intruding this but what uh, Artweight suggested was select an inverse, right click intrude and then select the entire object smooth and smooth. So now we've got some loops. What's not immediately apparent is whether these loops are actually separate or in some way all connected. What we can do, right click with the body rule selected get the separate command and then you can see that it's been broken down into three separate components so what I intend to do is repeat this procedure for each of the five perfect solids that I can do and then we'll, we'll have a look at how many loops are generated and then try and imagine if there's any kind of connection between the number of faces or vertices that a perfect solid has and the number of loops that are generated and then if this inverse one offers a clue as to why the other one produces such a curious combination of connected loops or unconnected parts which is what I was wondering in the last video but I'll try and keep this one shorter so what I shall do is pause the video and get to the point where I'm working on a cube and we'll see how many parts that ends up with so this was the tetrahedron and we've ended up with three separate loops that make this shape up Presumably, each of these separate loops has uh, self-similarity resistance, um, you know, similar in some way, but rotated around. I don't really know. They look like they might be. I mean, if I deselect that and select uh, another one there, that's probably the same as this other one. Probably. I don't know. I'm just guessing. OK, right. Uh, because of this sym symmetry within the perfect solids, that's why I'm guessing that. Right. I'm pausing the video now. OK, right, I'm ready to process the uh, cube now. So this is where I've got to. Let's use G, an identical. And to check that I've got a continuous ribbon around the outside, then go Select, Inverse, right-click, Intrude. Select the entire object, smooth that down a couple of times. Look at this. Be baffled, really, as to how many parts this is uh, made up of. Select the entire thing, right-click, and separate. What we got? Four parts. OK. So we've got four parts, but each of those four parts has only three meeting in each corner. I suppose it'd be easier if I sort of colour these components in to, to try and make sense of what was going on. But uh, I'll press on and now test what's next after a cube. Um, be the octahedron. So anybody care to guess how many parts an octahedron is going to break into? I don't know. So here we are with the octahedron ready to break down. I've been trying to guess what uh, what might happen. I've not managed to guess so far. Uh, select, invert, and intrude. Okay. So uh, and then smooth that down. Right. If I look from above, there, this was what is at the top here. This was a corner, and I've got this spiraling around in a corner, and this this was a side. So what can I see in this side? I can see. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Why would there be six there? 
and four at the top. I just can't guess. I'm, I'm going to say four again. Let's see. Right click and separate. Oh, uh, no, bad guess. Well, six parts. So that's each of these separate loop. Maybe we'll get the hang of this. So what we got? We got the um, the tetrahedron fell into three parts. The cube fell into four parts. The octahedron fell into six parts. Um, dodecahedron next. Okay, right. I'll go. I'll pause the video. We'll see how that turns out. Right. Yeah, so here we are with the uh, dodecahedron. So this has twelve sides, and each of those sides is a pentagon. Hmm. And so now I'm going to play the guessing game. If I can get this selected correctly, G I G I G I. Select that. Then select and inverse, and then intrude a bit. What we got there? You see, this has got these inner ones again. Maybe they'll link back to. Th I'm going to guess ten. So I'm going to say this is going to be ten parts. Right. I'm going to be disappointed, aren't I? Right click and separate. Oh, wrong again. I just can't guess. I just can't do it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So why why is that broken down into six parts? Let's pick a part out. So it loops round like that. Over, under, over, under, over. Hmm. Now I have no idea. One last try then. Let's see if I can guess right for the icosahedron. So I'll just pause the video and set things up for the icosahedron. So what, what have we got so far? Uh, tetrahedron was three. Cube is four. Octahedron is six. Dodecahedron is six again. And why? I don't know. This is a bit of a mystery. So here we are with the icosahedron. Right, I'm going to select this bit to G I G I G I. Get those loops running round there. Then go select and inverse intrude. Okay. Right. What's the guess now? Well, on average, because we had six with the octahedron and six with the uh, dodecahedron, and oh, this had. Let's see. It's either going to be I don't know five or six again. Um, I'm going to go for five. Okay, right. Let's see what we got. Separate what we got. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just can't guess. So if anybody has any theories as to why this happens and why the numbers turn out so different please feel for it free to share them but otherwise I'm at a complete loss as to uh, the, the mysterious way that these loops form and why you get so many different answers for when you separate it out into separate objects right then that's the end of the video I hope you found that vaguely interesting and uh, and if not well, you shouldn't have watched it in the first place then.